Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about how to approach a hypoxemic patient on the floors. So you are called for a rapid response for a patient with oxygen sats of 80%. How would you proceed and manage these patients? So let's talk about it. So there are two aspects to evaluating a hypoxemic patient. First thing is figuring out underlying cause and treating it. And second thing is to keep the oxygen saturation around 90 to 94% till their underlying cause is corrected. And both the aspects have to be dealt with simultaneously. In this video, we'll focus on first question, finding the underlying cause. The first question you should ask is, what's causing hypoxemia in this patient? To know this, identify the underlying comorbidities, especially you're looking at the chronic component first. This patient has heart failure, COPD, sleep apnea, etc and also know what's the underlying diagnosis during the admissions. So for example, patient was admitted with pneumonia, acute heart failure exacerbation, etc. And the person to ask this question would be the nurse that initiated this rapid response or the patient if he can talk. The second question, what happened acutely? And here you are trying to figure out the acute component which has called you to the bedside. Before you start thinking more, make sure that you put all these patients on 100% of IO2 using a non-rebreather mask with a bag because you want to make sure that you're oxygenating them as well as you go on with your thought process. So whenever you see a patient with hypoxemia, think about three main organ system, brain, lungs, and heart. The major reason for respiratory center depression is opiates. So ask your nurse about its use. In the pulmonary causes, there can be increased resistive work of breathing. For example, in airway obstruction, you can have increased elastic work of breathing. For example, seen in aspiration, pulmonary edema, ARDS, pneumothorax, etc. Or you have decreased surface area. For example, massive atelectasis, lower collapse from mucus plugging. The cardiac causes include sudden LV failure or sudden RV failure. In LV failure, you should be noticing flash pulmonary edema and is seen in patients with acute coronary syndromes, arrhythmias, volume overload, acute heart failure, etc. And in RV failure, you are possibly thinking about acute pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension. There can be other rare causes, for example, increased oxygen demand, such as fevers, seizures, severe metabolic acidosis, and occasionally there can be problem with hemoglobin carrying capacity, such as seen in methemoglobinemia. First step is ask your nurse and they should be able to give you important information about what's going on with your patient. So they should be able to give you the recent medications that the patient has been given. Has he been aspirating? How is their volume status? Has they been having fevers or having blood loss? Patient can also give you important symptoms. While you're talking to the patient, you're also inspecting the patient and the most important thing that you are looking for is how they are breathing. Most of the patients with hypoxemia will be in respiratory distress, working hard to breathe. However, in patients with respiratory center depression, the respiratory rates would be low. They would not have any dyspnea or work of breathing and they would not be agitated and possibly be altered. Look at their vital signs. Make sure that they are not hypotensive. You are also observing for any wheezing or strider and looking for any asymmetrical chest movement or paradoxical abdominal movement. Auscultation is the next step and when you auscultate, make sure you don't miss out the bases because that's where most of these changes lie. So specifically looking for decreased breath sounds, crackles or wheezing. These should give you some idea about the differentials that are causing the hypoxemia. Make sure that you order chest x-ray this should be able to give you a decent idea about differentials. So you should be able to look at different patterns, for example, pulmonary edema, lung collapse, effusions, consolidation, infiltrates, or in COPD, hyperinflated lung fields. Remember that patients with RV failure can have normal looking chest x-rays. A word about differentiating, consolidation, collapse, and effusion because all these three things appear white on chest x-ray. Remember that consolidation occurs 
when air is replaced by either water, pus, dead cells, or blood, etc. So the alveoli, they retain their shape. While in collapse, there is an obstruction which further leads to air being absorbed from the alveoli. So these alveoli are deflated and the lungs will collapse towards the hilum. In effusions, there is an extrinsic pressure on these alveoli and that makes the lung deflated. So air is pushed out of these alveoli. So how do they look on chest x-ray? In consolidation, lungs retain their shape. All you see is the white infiltrates. There is no change in heart or tracheal position. You may be able to appreciate air bronchograms. In a collapse, the lungs are small. They pull the heart and trachea towards them. You won't be able to appreciate any air bronchograms and the rib cage would be more crowded in that area. In effusions, the lungs are collapsed, but they are replaced by the fluid which are externally compressing it. The heart and trachea may even be pushed away and you would not be able to appreciate any air bronchograms. To rule out some of the important cardiac diseases, you have to get an EKG. That should be able to give you some idea about ruling out acute coronary syndrome and various arrhythmias. If you have a bedside ultrasound, use it as it's going to help you a lot in differentiating the cardiac causes. It can also help diagnose certain pulmonary conditions like pneumothorax, lung collapse, and pleural effusion. Most people will order ABG. However, understand that ABG gives you very limited information. You would be able to notice increased PACO2 in patient with respiratory center depression or patient with increased dead space and auto peep. And you may be able to find some abnormal hemoglobin levels such as methemoglobinemia. EBG can help you confirm the findings of hypoxemia on the pulse ox. It will show you low PO2, which you already know. The lactic acidosis will be increased because of work of breathing or hypoxemia. So make sure that you order an ABG, but don't wait on it to make decisions or call for help. To summarize, know the underlying relevant comorbidities and admission diagnosis and try to find the cause for acute change. So make sure that you go and evaluate patient personally. Do not be sitting in front of the computer. Talk to the nurse, talk to the patient, get some relevant points to help you make some differentials. Inspect for respiratory rate and work of breathing. Watch for chest wall and abdominal movements. Order for ABG, EKG and chest x-ray early as these services can take some time before they arrive. Auscultate. Specifically, make sure that you auscultate the bases. Look for wheezing, crackles and air entry. If you got bedside ultrasound, use it and order other tests as appropriate. So if you do these basic workup, you should be able to get a fair idea about what's causing the acute hypoxemia. In the next video, we'll discuss how to keep the oxygen stable while you are figuring these things out. Thank you.